This may not be the video topic that you thought we would be making a video about, but I wanted to talk about this in particular because of a few Reddit threads that I had seen over the past few days. They're mostly on the Canucks and the Calgary Flame subs, and they kind of go out there and they take shots at each other, because of course, that's what Canucks and Flames fans do. We're talking today about two players that recently signed long-term extensions with their teams and who happen to not necessarily be the youngest guys out there. Two players that had phenomenal 2021-2022s and who have not been on pace for anything near that this season's worth of play. Now, I know for one of them, he's actually gotten a lot better as the season has gone on. The other is just coming back from injury and he's been moved up to the top line again, so there's a little bit more desirability, let's just say, of results in the next few days. But we're going over onto the Canucks sub first and foremost because a week ago, we had ourselves a post made by Few Strategy 1508 saying this to Canucks fans. If you ever feel bad about the JT Miller contract, remember, this guy is making 10.5 AAV for eight years. And attached is a picture of Jonathan Huberto and his overall statistical profile from that week ago. In 14 games played, the guy had 8 points, and you can see that in the comment section of this Canucks-related post, there are a lot of fans going out there saying, Hey man, it's only been 14 games. Why are you going out there and like trash-talking a guy? He's been kind of at his worst performance ever. He's going to be a lot better. There are worse deals than this. Come on, man. There are Canucks fans pretty much clowning on this poster for making this post in the first place, but this post was then cross-posted onto the Calgary Flame sub saying this. Later that day, JT Miller was on the ice for four even strength goals against. Huberto has been on the ice for three against in 15 games. And so what I wanted to do was talk about both of these guys, JT Miller of the Vancouver Canucks, as well as Jonathan Huberto of the Calgary Flames, and compare and contrast the two since their overall situations are kind of similar. Now for JT, he was an absolute monster last year, getting himself 99 points in 80 games played. He was the top scorer on the Vancouver Canucks, and... He was only 29 years old when he finished off that year. Making 5.25 AAV for one more season, the Vancouver Canucks re-signed Miller to an $8 million extension that will extend till the end of 2030. It's got no move protection, he's going to be a Vancouver Canuck, and he's a guy who started out this season really poorly. I mean, Miller was on the ice for like the first five total goals against the Canucks had, or was it nine total goals against? I don't know, it's been a lot. But even right now, JT Miller, he's a minus seven on the season. He is over a point per game, 23 points in 22 games played. On the penalty kill, during the first parts of the year at least, recently it's been a lot better, but starting out the season on the Vancouver Canucks penalty kill, Miller was not really doing all too much to give that penalty kill some life. This became a pattern the Canucks fans saw with this guy, not just on penalty kill situations, but also in clutch dire moment situations, like in the final seconds of the third period when the other team is pressing trying to tie the game up. JT Miller would not really be going out there and doing too much. He'd just be standing in one place, puck watch, the play would go by him, his check would leave him, the check would go open, and then Miller would just completely lose out on the play. This happened quite a few times. Miller's defensive game, I don't know, for some reason, he has this reputation of being a two-way capable guy just because he plays penalty kill, but he's not good at it. And I know he's been getting a little bit better as the season has gone on. I feel like the reduced amount of ice time has actually been helping him out a lot. But for JT, this season has not necessarily been all too great for him, even though he is over a point per game and on pace for 41 goals on the year. Like, we say this all the time, but Miller just knows how to get points. He's every second pass on the power play. He's got a really good shot. He's a great playmaker, and when he's in the offensive zone, he has some really good talent for reading the game. It's just everywhere else, in his own zone, on the stat sheet, he's always on for goals against, and he hasn't been great in that respect. Again, he has been better the past week or so than the first few weeks of the year. But at the same time, there still is a very individual profile that I feel like Miller has that a lot of other Canucks players don't. 
and that is just very capable offensive production while also being a player that a lot of Canucks fans would say is kind of disappointing. But of course, we're not even at the start of the 8 million AAV period yet. This is still the last year of Miller's 5.6 AAV deal. And if he continues playing in the ways that he has played against Vegas two days ago and against Colorado, against San Jose as well, if he continues playing like that, then I feel like the Canucks are actually going to walk away with a pretty okay player heading into the next few years. Not all seven years of that 8 million AAV, but the next few years. It really depends on how he goes out there and performs. As for Jonathan Huberdeau, switching over to the Calgary Flames side of things here, he hasn't been all too great either. He's on a 5.9 AAV deal right now, but then next season, his 10.5 AAV extension kicks in till the end of 2031. He's 29 years old, so the same age as JT Miller. And Huberto's coming off a season where he had 115 points in 80 games played. Now, heading over to Calgary, Huberto had not been all too great to start things off. We made a video talking about how he's been kind of mid, and I guess the reception on that video was very noteworthy because everybody was talking about Huberto and how he'd failed to show up so far in the respect that people thought he'd be able to do. Sure, he's a good player, and right now he's at 10 points in 18 games played on pace for 44 on the year, but the guy literally had a point production pace that was double last year. And a lot of people are going out there saying, hey, it's a new system, he's in a brand new team, he'd been used to the Florida system the entire time. Give the guy a break. There are nine more years of this player in Calgary. The first 14 games are not going to define how he's going to perform in that stretch. We know he's a very talented playmaker. We know he's very skilled. We know he has all of the tools in the world to be one of the best players in the league. So the first 14 to 18 games where he's not producing and he's kind of not really being given all the chances because he was just moved up to the first line today in practice. He had just come back from injury too. You want to talk about JT Miller where his on-ice performance has really been bad in his own zone? For Jonathan Huberto, his offensive performance has just been kind of lackluster, so it's sort of a reverse situation over there for Hubes. Or Hubie? What's his nickname over there in Calgary? Hubby? Oh man, that's a weird one. But either way, Huberto is looking to find his gear, I feel, and by the time things really get going, I think the rest of the league is going to shut up about him being mid- and if he's part of the reason that Elias Lindholm is going to be able to get 50 goals in a season one day, then I don't think anybody is going to be calling him that in that time span. But of course, he has to get used to the systems a little bit more, just kind of work things out, work out the kinks, as they say. I know Matthew Kachuk has been really good in Florida, but Kachuk is a little bit younger, so I think there's a little bit more adaptability there in a player like him. Plus, his play style is completely different from Huberto. Huberto is so finesse and so pinpoint accurate with his passes and his positioning with the players around him. They had such a good system over there with the Panthers, but it takes a while to get used to things, especially when you're a player like Huberto. So... Talking to the Conslayer thoughts about this JT Miller Huberto thing and how Flames and Canucks fans had kind of been going at it for a bit, at least one week ago they were, comparing these two guys because they're both 29 years old, they both signed long-term extensions that start in 2023-2024, and they're both playing in ways that you could say are quite, let's just say, not desirable. You want Huberto to score more points? You want Miller to be better in his own zone? You want Miller to do more, even though he is a point-per-game player because Miller hasn't necessarily been a top-of-the-line superstar? I said this last year, and I'll say it again just to end off this video, but Miller was in that same 100-point caliber point pace as other guys that I really feel like I would have rather than Miller. I would have Panarin over Miller. I'd have Kaprizov over Miller. I'd have Marner over Miller. I'd have Matthew Kachuk over Miller. I'd have a lot of players that were in Miller's point production range range on my team instead of JT Miller. It's just he happened to be in that group of guys because his point production was so gosh darn good. This season, he's got the point production still, but there's more that we want out of this guy, especially since he's making $8 million a year starting next season. For Hubert O'Lemonair, thoughts in the comment section below about his overall profile, what he's been doing so far, and what you're expecting in the next little bit over here. Do you think he's going to get it together right away? Do you think it's going to take some time? How many points do you think he ends off the season with? And how well do you think he performs for the rest of the eight-year deal that starts out next year? Talk to the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this. And... Bye.